So, after the last video, which was a content creator early access test and myth of empires, I'm actually going to follow the video on because it's done quite well and a lot of people have been commenting on it. And I'm going to continue it with a video that is after playing for four to five weeks and over 400 hours logged in on Steam alone just on this game, playing on official PvP servers, not the EU locked or the NA locked, the actual open network. I'm kind of going to give my overall thoughts and reviews as well as kind of a mini guide to get you started on the game in one video but without rambling on anymore i'm just going to jump right into the video now and get amongst it all so is the game built for zergs or is it actually built for smaller guilds and in my honest opinion i think it's fairly balanced zergs well when you think of zergs you think hundreds of people but honestly it's more like guilds that can maybe keep about 30 to 40 active players and this is a pinnacle peak like guild size and the rest are just people allied together the average guild in is anywhere from 20 to 30 people and if you're holding them numbers from what I've seen you're doing a fairly decent job and a lot of the people are just mass recruiting incompetent players so it just looks good for numbers because you can check and in reality you can actually do a fairly solid job with anywhere from 10 to 20 people I mean you wouldn't do all end game content and county battles but yeah you could definitely have a good shot at the game so if you're a small guild or a zerg guild there's so much content in this game for you like 100% zergs are really going to go at the end game 900 level proficiency efficiencies and all the best shit and they're gonna go for a county battle to own the tax on the server and then they're gonna go hard at prefactures and then they'll probably push yourself to try and hit and wipe some caves like the pinnacle difficulties of raiding in the game at end game wipe some bases have some server walls and then some other guys could maybe go around doing some small scale raids some pvp try and get into a county battle if they've got some good npcs on the go it's only 20 man for the county battles so yeah there's a lot of content for both size guilds and i think the next part i'll address kind of stems into more the small scale or the large scale in essence and that's ORP which stands for offline raid protection so if you are going to set your ORP though it can't be set eight hours after you've started setting it so there's no instant protection but what ORP does is allow you to have some offline raid protection where anything in your flag range which isn't massive but it, it is really decent if you utilize it correctly cannot be damaged and then you have a siege window where people can raid you now anything you do have outside these flag ranges now they can be attacked you cannot put towers on them you only get three guild flags once it's maxed out i believe and they're the ones you can put towers on so yeah you can still be raid in all your other spots but your main base has some protection now you don't instantly get that protection you have to work for that on your flag you have something that you'll put resources in there and each one earns you extra hours of protection timer now you don't have to get them all but i would advise early game and especially if you're small numbers you really want to max out on as much orp as you can get limiting the time people can see you and that also helps you against the zergs i actually think this is a really nice feature for the longevity of the guilds on the game and will probably keep a healthier player base long term in comparison to the likes of Ark. So I think this game in essence the way they've done it is, is a much better system for survival games. There's still hardcore elements to it for sure but is it as hardcore as Ark? No and I don't necessarily think that is a bad thing when it comes to having to be online 24 hours a day and people online. So yeah I, I would say it's actually a really good feature and there's nothing I would add to it. I, I think they've implemented it really nicely. To add to that as well you do have to also pay decay timer now if you do not pay your decay timer in your flag stuff will rapidly decay and just start to demolish we even at one point at the beginning where we actually lost quite a few towers because we forgot to pay the decay timer because we were doing so much stuff and the game is just so vast so you can't just have one guy come on the server build up tech the best base spots and just go inactive and lock it down like on the orp servers on arc it's actually really nice because if someone quits the game you have a chance of getting the base and it means it's easier to raid or shit will DK and that's kind of what they need to do to stop people taking the best base spots if they're not going to play and it means people who are playing are fairly active not to a not to an abnormal level but you need to be fairly active and the more flags you have and the bigger the base you have obviously the more it will cost you now is the game grindy or is it reasonable I've heard a lot of people I've seen comments you know it's super grindy waste of time so how you to your gear takes longer to make with some crafting benches and siege 
siege equipment, mainly the guild bonds, it takes several hours to build to the point where we either have a person who's AFK and it helps speed up the craft and all the XP and on that bench because sometimes when you set stuff off probably ain't going to be done for 14, 15 hours when you're making multiple things in the bench. So yes, it does take a long time. Would I say it's grindy in that sense? Not really because you're fucking AFK on the bench getting level and you can leave your computer on, go get some food, go, go to fucking work and shit like that and that's what a lot of people do. You do gain benefits in game but you can also leave it making itself and it'll just do it and it does take time. They have done this so you can't probably just barrage bases and wipe everyone so it's kind of making the player base have a bit more longevity in it, a bit more grindy so as uh, guilds can't just go smash everyone. Now you could make multiple benches to speed this up but it still is kind of a little bit time gated. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing but coming from an arc perspective where in a couple of days we fight everything out and we just go hard and fuck, you're definitely more limited in your playstyle but with how vast this game is and how many systems there is, I think you can get by in it and it's definitely built for a longer game experience so don't really want you here for a couple of weeks, this seems like it's a game that they're wanting you to spend many months on if not years on progressing through all the systems and you know have some serious longevity in it. And another thing if you don't start moving out of the lower to your areas you're not going to get the right resources so if you're not farming in the right spots like the higher to your resources it's going to get grindy as fuck. There's also limited mines for high tier resources like meteoric which is the end game resource you need for the best weapons and tools and half the time if you really want to get the benefits of that you want to go to your flag and you want to get a collection boost otherwise you'll feel like you're really not getting anything from them but they're highly important resources at end game so for example you would clear the NPCs out from the mine with a group of people you'd have a flag situated nearby with some beds and towers because obviously a lot of people are contesting for it you clear the NPCs you get one guy in your flag to tech is mine and boost and whatever his proficiency if he wants to level that and you're going to get a lot more resources once every 24 hours so each guy in your guild would tech that they'd farm it and they would get a lot more meteoric so you get more bang for your buck but yeah you really do want to be progressing and moving into the other areas and going at the end game stuff because if you keep grinding the lower level stuff you are not going to level so you always want to progress into the better to your stuff the better to your resources because they give you more xp if you sit and you're making iron ingots at level 57 ideally you shouldn't be doing that you want to be knocking out meteoric bars or ingots and you're going to get a lot more xp if you maybe triple stack your xp boost if you increase your flag to get more xp and then you take both your xp character boost if that's meteoric you are going to get a shitload of xp if you also get new people into your guild you probably want to put them on one of them benches tell them to do what i've just said and because they haven't learned it around the level you set it off for them and they will gain xp incredibly fast meaning when they're new to the game it is a lot easier for them to catch up which i genuinely believe helps people a lot now anyone crying they cannot catch up all they need to do is come into a decent guild and log on the game they don't even have to be there for the beginning part they could leave their computer on help get the resources and just leave their self craft and stuff which helps the guild and inevitably helps them play the game better now since i had my initial few days on the game in early access i said the devs comms were really good with me and respectful i've played a lot longer now and i've seen a lot more and i've connected with a lot more guilds and i've seen people who've played this for like five six hours maybe more so are the devs comms actually good and since i know they're now partnered with snail games has that changed my mind and do i have a different opinion on that well since i've been playing there's lots of updates since the game is released maintenance is nearly every couple of days and in-game mail from the devs where they give major updates so like every time they do a major update you are constantly told they're constantly in out they reply not only that if you don't see the discord you actually get a mail and they'll give you some you know maybe freebies nothing too major but it is actually nice to work up and have some of these things that help you and if they see things are becoming a bit grindy or other things they'll hide a, give a helping hand there for every single player not specific guilds everyone on the game i can't really tell you how they communicate when it comes to handing in tickets to do with exploits and reports because if i'm honest i haven't seen that many to even need to put tickets and reports in which is a fucking good thing in itself in my honest opinion because on arc you would just sit there for days you'd never stop with the amount of shit that's going on but what i can tell you is they do fix exploits pretty fucking fast they do have really good comms is
is adam to an issue in the game right now yeah you, you consistently see that but that's with any game where you can kind of farm and sell gold to people it's always going to be an issue now from what i'm seeing they do patch change and tweak things on a consistent basis so as of now after 400 hours and you know just over a month in i think it's actually really good what i'm seeing and with them launching the game with more servers and more players and i think it's over 30k now playing on a daily player base for you know a smaller company i personally think they're doing a good job i did make a video and i think it's nearly at 30k views now hence making this follow-up video and um you know they did give out certain freebies to me for that which i appreciated and the comms there were fairly good when they said they were going to do something and when they said if you get this certain amount of views because it wasn't just to me it was to anyone who wanted to be in the content creator program you know they stuck to the word and they, and they give me what they said at the times when they said they were gonna and i'll be honest from the other experience with games this rarely happens because you are just some cunt content creator that is a nobody so it's nice to see that they do stick to the words regardless of how many views or subscribers you get so yeah i can give them kudos for that for definite they, they seem to be decent now is this going to be a game i'll be playing for years and years probably not because my main aim is june awakening and ash is a creation alpha 2 with that being said i'm not going to shit on the game just because i don't plan on playing it for the future and it's nothing this game has done of why i won't be playing it i just have other things that i'm more interested in so in my honest opinion the devs communications if they stay like that they are really on a fucking winner and they i really hope they do stay like this because it's quite refreshing to see so systems in the game man honestly there's so many systems in this game it would keep you going on a pve server let alone pvp the proficiencies alone like you mining you lumbering or oh, let's just focus more on pvp because honestly you just cannot fit it into videos like one video you need multiple videos to cover this so say you're going at one-handed you can get up to level 900 now once you get to 450 you've got to pay about 3,000 coins so you can get to 600 once you get to 600 i believe you've got to pay how is it like 22k and then you can get from 600 to 750 but once you start pushing for 750 and getting up there because i'm at like 700 now i mean it's grindy this is not an easy task and this is using the choosing method where you capture a bunch of npcs you put them in a box you use like a one-handed stone hammer for one-handed or you'll use like your rakes to do your pole arm um, and then your physique you'll get like a box which i'll show on this now you get like a box and you let foxes beat you and you basically basically get shit armor go down with your uh, proficiency boosts that you get from your flag or your cakes that you can buy and then you will basically just tank the damage now even doing that it takes many many hours and even so once you get to 750 plus it is a real grind i haven't actually seen anyone anywhere near 900 that i know of at the minute um it, it is definitely a thing you need to do though because if you do not increase your proficiencies in game you are going to get a debuff on all the late game armor so it's not like arc where i slap a low level in the best armor or other games and you're going to get it like you need to be proficient in that to use them which i think is actually a really nice thing they've done it means you have to earn your place there and you can't just choose it and get given loads of good shit but on top of that if you try and fight someone who's got 750 pole arm and 750 in these other pvp proficiencies physique heavy armor and you're like what 400 i can tell you from experience you're going to get slapped or from my experience when i've slapped people doing the same thing and if you match someone with the right proficiencies you then have wines and foods and all these other buffs and the traits on your horses that you can get and your warriors and it becomes really tactical and um, really long-winded and really skill-based the the combat in this game is not what you think if you think it's just people hitting and you're gonna go on like other games and start hitting you're gonna fucking get slapped and then this is where you see people crying oh the cheating the game's bugged it's a load of shit they're not cheating you're just being shit and you don't understand the systems now i'm sure there is some cheaters but from the time i've played and i'm in contact with some of the biggest guilds on the game and some of the more experienced guys i talked to there's not much treating going on it, it is a lack of understanding for the systems and it's a lack of understanding for the game and a willingness to put the effort in because it is a hardcore pvp game at heart or maybe semi-hardcore so do know that going in really work on your proficiencies i would get your heavy armor up as high as you can get your physique up as high as you can and your pole arm so you've got more health you get more reduced damage in your heavy armor you can wear better heavy armor use better pole arms and 
content on your horse you're going to be on a lot so you really do want to fucking get them things up as high as possible now if you want to be on the floor fighting you want to probably use a blunt weapon to do as much blunt damage as you can which you can go at one handed two handed or you can even use pole arm but in essence you do want to get all these skills up but i would say physique heavy armor and and pole arm is the ones you really want to prioritize early game and get in and before you start going to raid and attack people i would really work on these because if you come into the game later on you will get slapped but eventually this will level out and everyone will be on the same level and that's when people will have less advantages and it will be just based on skill which is nice on top of that you have notability where the more you play and the things you're doing within game will get you that and you can increase your nobility rank by your honor and by the gold you pay to it there is guild skills and guild tech and the guild skills you get for example we're trying to get ours to level 90 so one handed has increased percentage of think like 40 percent siege weapons and two handed so being in a guild that really focuses and getting your guild members to contribute coins to the guild depot and know that when you contribute the coins to the guild depot the officers and leaders cannot take that out for personal gain they can only put that into the guild so there's no way like on these other games your guild leader um can inside personally you should always be in a guild where you know the guild leader's got a good discord or he's trustworthy because i know there's a lot of scammers out there that will get about 40 people in and then rob them blind it, it happened all the time in new worlds and it does happen on fucking arc a lot so do pick the right guild but at the same time know that as soon as you join a guild you will get all them benefits which increases you in pvp and pve monumentally so do not slack on leveling that guild up because if you slack on leveling the guild up and the guild you're in and all your players are for, fully focused on themselves inevitably it will fuck you all over because everyone else who has brain cells is doing this you're also limited by not being able to get the better siege equipment at end game and there's just so much vastness to it so take some time to read watch videos and honestly play the game and experience it that is the best way you can learn in here but the content is so rich and vast you, you know and so beneficial you really do not want to slack on any of these things so after playing the old map and the new map i personally think they both have the benefits the old map definitely seems to be more resource heavy so there's more stuff for resources but the new map actually was told was fairly shit it's actually nice we've got the waterfall cave and once you build that up it is virtually unfucking raidable and anyone who does want to raid you you would have had to take multiple counties off them or you would have had to been super toxic or just constantly fucking over their resource runs and really pushing on their guilds and even then they're gonna have a hard time if you are fairly skilled you can just farm these guys for resources and let them raid you because inevitably they'll lose more than you i'll be honest caves are pretty broken right now definitely can raid them but it would take a lot a lot of people a lot of alliances and you'd lose a lot so not many people want to hit them so if you do get a good cave like the one one we're in or on the old map in the underwater zones you should get that shit because it's fucking liquid gold man it is so good also just to summarize that i think both maps have benefits both maps are nice I personally am really enjoying the new map myself. These are shitload of longevity in this game. I'm talking if this coop's going the way they are, you're talking five to ten years, and the only thing that will limit them is Unreal Engine 4 and potentially the connection to Nail Games, the most corrupt company on the planet, because they don't own this company and they're just partnered. If Snail Games stay back the way they are now and let these guys do what they're doing, they, they are serious learning of good things. The only other issue would be if they add in too much pay to win the pay to win obviously is a tiny part of the game i don't think it's honestly even as bad as arc so the pay to win element that people are bothered about it actually isn't that bad but you do have a bronze coin shop that means people can buy bronze coins that's the in-game currency for real life money from other players in game through the market now the players who do this have an early game advantage of being able to buy resources structures and weapons that people are not swiping won't have it also allows them to increase their proficiencies and guild skills and tech faster as they don't have to spend time in game grinding out large amounts of bronze coin however it's slowed down by the fact that guild skills and techs you need guild activity points and for proficiencies you need to gain proficiency in that skill so you can buy it to a certain extent but you can't really do anything with your guild if you are not playing the game and getting activity points which i believe it's capped at 1.5 million per day and my guild caps on that pretty 
pretty much rapid it doesn't even take anywhere near uh, the full day for us we just kind of knock it out rapid early on so yeah i mean you still have to be grinding or it doesn't benefit you and as for your proficiencies you cannot directly buy your proficiencies up so early game it does give people a little boost but honestly if you go out with two or three people you can make about 100k in an hour so they will be spending a shitload of money but in essence they're kind of not really getting out because they're buying it while as you're earning it while you're earning it in game you're leveling multiple different proficiencies you are in game using your skills to get better and you're also farming resources for your guild and you're getting keys to unlock chests and get BPs and you can also get really good uh, slaves and stuff whereas these people are going to become lazy and I think inevitably might be a little bit of a burden on the guild because if all they do is buy coins it's not good but I wouldn't say the pay to win is nothing to be bothered about we don't pay to win and we've absolutely smashed it with the numbers we have um, and every other guild I know does not pay to win most of the EU and NA don't the Chinese do pay to win a little bit but I'll be honest the Chinese know life this game so much it doesn't really make a fucking difference and it hasn't affected our gameplay experience I don't think it's one to watch overall my experience with the game has been pretty fucking amazing it's a really good game all my guild are really happy with it it's allowed us to test our roster out to you know test our communication for future games to push us to grind to specialize in certain areas and it has things on offer that other games do not and if you plan to go to the games the like of june or ashes and they aren't out yet this is definitely a good game to get you guys in to see how they work so they guild orientated and group orientated and i really like that and they really do push on that can it be stressful at times organizing within the case and the mass vastness of everything that you get to do in the game oh fucking right it can but is it worth it and is the benefit yes 100 so overall like if i was to give it out a 10 i would say a 7 5 to 8 right now i think the game is really fucking decent uh, i think it's one of the if not the best survival games out there in my honest opinion right now if you don't like this old school theme and you want dragons and all that then ask your place but no it is full of exploits and you watch my other previous videos and, and just take my word after many years and I was playing if you want wipes rust your game but yeah I would definitely give this game a go if you ever played Atlas and that as well and you enjoyed that this has definitely got mass elements of that I don't think there's much else to say I'll maybe do another follow-up video if you've got any questions leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you and I really appreciate you watching and I also appreciate the mass amount of support I've been getting on my older videos and new videos don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there's a shitload more content and coming and better content and hit that like button i'll catch you in the next one cheers